The first setup I'm going to do is for 13 threads per inch because a thir half inch 13 bolt is a pretty common size. So that's something you might do. But this uh, setup here will work for anywhere between 8 and uh, 16 threads per inch with uh, just one little exception here. But as you can see here, we're going to uh, look up on the screw chart what we need here. And this will be a 64 tooth and it'll be a 20 tooth spacer gear on the outside. But I want to refer back here to the, the actual chart and I'm going to put the ruler here on the 13 and zoom in just a little bit if I can. And remember the positions here. But this will refer to Uh, figure 2 and we're going to use a 32 tooth uh, that'll be the compound tumbler we'll use the 32 that's over on the lathe but we're going to use a 52 tooth on the screw it says right here on the screw that's the lead screw we're talking about and then the other one is the 64 and that will be uh, B toward the uh, back position and the 20 will be toward the front. So now let's look at the gears themselves. Here's our banjo and this is the lead screw. If you could follow it all the way through, it's a lead screw and we need a 52 tooth. So there it is and this I cleaned up a little bit. I don't think that gear has ever been used and it's going to go right on to the uh, uh, diameter here with the key. And I'm putting the 52 up just so that I can refer to it if I would ever need to at a later time. And that, that you can find it without actually counting the, uh, the teeth. I just had it on there. Why is it so... And count on getting good and dirty when you do this. There. Finally going on. And then... If you need to tap, be sure and tap ever so gently. Just with, because these are uh, fragile gears. That's why I'm just using a hammer handle. And then there's the, the spacer also with a uh, keyway in it. And a washer. And finally the nut. And that needs to be tightened down. And that'll seat that gear. I'm pushing it down now. Snug that up good. Don't put any tools on the gear itself. Now for the other gears here in position B, the big one is a 64 tooth and this is a 20 tooth and they're to be mounted like this, not like this. Notice that I got a bushing in there already. And these two gears are held together by one of these die cast uh, spacers or bushings, whatever they're called, with the two keys on it. And the bolts look like this. They got flats on them and when you put them through the banjo, the flats keep them from turning so that you can tighten them up. Put some oil on this, of course. I'm doing it dry for the purposes of the demonstration so that I don't have such a big mess. And then a washer and the nut, and again, these are 11 16 In all my life, I've very seldom needed an 11 16 wrench, but uh, this is one case where I do. Some of these parts that I'm using in gears have never been used since this thing was made. Now, I found that uh, the brown paper that I was using before is a little too stiff, so I've gone to, uh, uh, really, this is an index card is what it is and uh, that fits together better for my spacer. Snug it up. Now you'll be doing this all on the machine of course or you can do it on a bench if you want but I'm doing it on the bench just for the sake of, uh, of ease of my demonstration. So now the entire assembly here is ready to put on the machine. So let's do that and check to see if I'm truly getting 13 threads per inch. The banjo is back on the machine and I'm set for again 13 threads per inch. 
Remember that uh, this is 52 teeth, this is 64, and I'm on the 32 tooth part here of this uh, dual gear, compound gear. Now this small gear here is strictly a spacer, even though they specified a certain size, it's just a spacer, but perhaps that's the good size to use there because it'll be used in one of the other setups. Now I need to proof it to see if this is truly cutting 13 threads per inch if I were to be threading here in the next operation. So let me show you how to do that. I have mounted my Mitutoyu one inch uh, travel dial indicator magnetic base that's right on the bed and it's been zeroed out now for 13 threads per inch we need to see uh, what the pitch is and the pitch is the distance from one thread to the other so if we divide uh, 1 by 13 77 thousandths is the distance that the carriage should uh, move in one revolution of uh, the spindle now I've also set just a little bit of a, a setup here that's just my ruler held on there with a magnet and I've got a little scribe mark on the bowl gear right here that I can see and it's not going to show up but I'm not going to worry about it because you just got to trust me on this and let's uh, move in just a little closer and watch the indicator now and I'm just going to move the uh, uh, spindle by hand I'm not using power it's still unplugged and the uh, half nut lever is already engaged and I removed the backlash so here we go and one full revolution is setting on zero right now and I'm just about up to it there I'm watching my scribe line and sure enough I'm right about at 77 thousandths so my setup is successful now let's do just one more for threading a couple other things to note on this lathe that this switch is not operative apparently the original owner switched almost uh, immediately no pun intended there to a, a reversing switch which is mounted down there so he didn't remove the original switch and neither am I but let's take a look now uh, as I remove this uh, banjo I'm going to take it to the bench for the next uh, uh, gear change but can you see now why they call this gear right here the screw gear or the gear on the screw because it literally is the gear that's on the lead screw so this is ready to take off and I wanted you to see on the back side here of the banjo the way the uh, the flats on these screws uh, fit into this little slot here to keep them from turning that way you don't need a, a wrench on the back side I think that's pretty handy for the second setup I want to set the change gears so that I can cut 30, 20 threads per inch so my files the straight edge there and you can see that we need uh, a 40 tooth gear on the uh, gear screw and then uh, for position C we need a 20 and a 64 and for position A we need a 64 and a 32 and I've already set those gears aside and if you look now at this page this is what the setup is going to look like where we're using a uh, more gears we do, uh, it's a little more complicated setup so down here in this position here we're going to use gears as well as up here in the uh, A position so you can read uh, the text here too which might be quite helpful if you have the book read the text and then look at the this picture and at the chart now once you become familiar with doing this it, it's going to be a lot easier but it's still time consuming compared to a quick change gearbox back at the bench now and first thing I'm going to do is to change this uh, gear screw to uh, 40 so 
this one will go on here. And then in position uh, A, right here, we're going to have a 64 and 32 combination right there. That'll go there. And then this one, which is a, a 20 uh, and 64, will be taken off of here and moved down to position C. This is position A up here. Position C. So let me loosen these up and start to make the change. I've taken off the other gears here and the first thing I'm going to do here is replace the uh, the 52 tooth here that is on the uh, the screw sometimes called the screw gear with the 40 tooth there it is but I need to put the spacer on first this time and that wasn't real clear in the in the direction put the spacer on then the gear again that's a 40 it's marked right on it washer nut these are finished nuts with the flat on one side and the nice crown on the other or acorn on the other so be sure and use those in the correct direction. Snug that up good. There isn't any good way to hold that uh, when you tighten it other than your hands. Next over here in the A position we're going to use the combination here of a 64 and 32 and it has to be put on with the uh, the small uh, l let me correct myself it's a 64 and a 20 and the small gear has to be toward the bracket toward the banjo like that put a little oil on those I know I'm not doing it just for the sake of the mess also these washers have a bevel on one side or a chamfer on one side and not on the other so I like to try to put them on the way they belong and then I'm going to get these gears to mesh and tighten this one and then finally over here in the A position comes this uh, gear with uh, a 64 and a 32 And that'll be brought up, meshed properly with that paper method. There is another method of doing that, and that is to use a, a, a small rod, uh, let's say a paper clip or something like that, but it has to be a wire of the correct diameter. And that would have to be determined by looking it up in charts or doing a mathematical calculation, but evidently these are not all that uh, that critical so I'll just do it again with paper between I've already done this one and I'll do this off camera and then I'll meet you over at the lathe because this is about ready to go I brought the gears up and I'm on the 32 tooth back here again same as before and I've got this snugged up And it's ready to test run and see if I'm truly at uh, 20 threads per inch. Now let me talk just a little bit about lubrication before I move on to the other end of the lathe. Some people just use oil and it's certainly better than nothing, but an excellent uh, gear lube is a CMD Extreme Pressure Lube number 3, anti-scoring. I also use this for threading and I used to use it for dead centers but at the very least if you use some kind of uh, gear lubricant this is easily available in any auto parts store it's, this is 80 to 90 but some of it is 85 but it's made specifically for gears and uh, it, uh, it really clings to the gears it doesn't doesn't fall off like a regular thin oil so use lubricant on your gears. I know it's messy but it'll make them last a long time. 
the proof is in the pudding and this isn't going to be necessary once you get confidence in changing your gears but remember that I set it for 20 threads per inch which is 1 20th of an inch and if you divide that out of course 1 20th of an inch equals 50 thousandths so looking again here on my bull gear I have scribed a mark and I'm just using this ruler here as a zero mark that's uh, and you can do it other ways too but that's that's the way I'm doing it now and then uh, remember I've already taken the backlash out and the half nut lever has been engaged and there's the uh, indicator set on zero and with my free hand and this thing unplugged uh, I'm going to rotate it exactly a revolu uh, one revolution and there I am on my uh, little index mark and I've moved 50,000 so that confirms that my, uh, my gears are arranged and selected in the correct manner and uh, that it, uh, I can cut true threads at 20 threads per inch. And that concludes this little part of the video that uh, is involved in gear cutting. So the next part I'm going to change the gears and set them up for uh, feeding, just uh, regular feeding of the uh, carriage longitudinal feed because the way we've got to set now is just way way too coarse of a feed for general turning and 95 or percent or more of your work and some of you it'll be 100 percent of your work is not threading but just feeding so let's take a look at that